Hi folks, Paul here and today I just thought I'd share with you a few little um, tips and tricks when it comes to hand drill. I noticed a lot of us have been practicing our friction fires and um, now we're stuck in the garden and stuff like that. It's the perfect time to practice friction fire or even to try and learn it from, from you. And I just thought I would share a few different um, little tricks, maybe hacks you might want to call them, that I have come up with in the past couple of days. Now, I'm not going to take any credit for these, I'm not sure if they've been done in the past, um, but I've certainly never seen anyone do them, so I thought I would share them with you guys. The first one is the spindle. So, for my spindle I'm using a piece of elder. Elder is a brilliant spindle for um, hand drill, which is what we're doing today. Uh, reason being, it's very soft wood. But it has a bit of a downfall in that it has a piff. Hopefully you can see that there. So elder has a piff. Now to get elder to work properly what you need to do is find a ratio where you've got kind of more wood than piff. That's like your ideal. Um, as this end is just now, this is far too much piff and when you go to do the hand drill what ends up happening is you end up with a nipple in the middle of your notch and what that does is kind of reduce friction area and also make it a wee bit more difficult to spin the, uh, the actual spindle because you're, you're making it into a set kind of hole. So my first sort of trick if you like is this. So that might just look like the end of a spindle might usually look but remember Elder has this piff in the middle. So what I've done here is get a piece of willow that was roughly the same size as the piff that was inside and I've just pushed the willow inside the Elder. Now what that does is eliminate the piff which is the softer material which causes the nipple and it also gives us more hard wood to create friction on the board. Now I've put a bit of willow that goes into about here and you can kind of constantly refill your spindle as you wear it down um, but a really nice way of making use of a fantastic spindle that is quite difficult to get a good ratio on so that's number one is inserting a little slither of willow into your elder spindle as opposed to looking for the right sort of ratio of wood to piff. Now the second trick um, isn't really a new technique as such it's something I do quite a lot but I tend to do it with pine resin and what that is is to make your hands sticky so the reason I want to make my hands sticky is when I'm trying to get downward pressure on the board essentially what I'm doing is I'm pushing my hands together and I'm trying to drive my hands down the spindle now if you've got dry hands you'll find that your hands they don't really grip they just slip down the spindle and a lot of people kind of struggle that way so their, their hands will kind of fly down the spindle really quickly and they're not converting that downward pressure onto the board. So sticky hands enables us to get that really good grip on the spindle and um, makes the most of our passes. So by doing this we can get really nice long passes and we can get a lot of downward force. And it's a really really good way of um, learning and also just maintaining the skill. It makes it so much easier if you can do it. Now, like I say, typically I use pine resin, but I was watching one of Uncle Ray's videos the other day, and some of you guys might have seen it, I believe it was the Aboriginal Britain one, and what he did was he picked up some bluebells, and he, he put them in his mouth and chewed them. Now in my opinion, that's a bit Hollywood. All you need to do is get some bluebell bulbs, put them on a hard surface, and crush them up. Now the reason he used bluebells was to fletch an arrow, and he used the bluebells like glue to hold the arrow in place. Kind of a temporary glue until he got the lashings on, but a glue nonetheless. And that got me thinking too, well, I wonder if it's sticky enough to use for doing a hand drill fire, if it's gonna give me that same grip that pine resin does. They're much, much easier to collect than pine resin, and they are equally as good, if not better. Um, obviously, they're not um, edible, and they're quite bad for you if you do eat them, so just be very, be very careful of, you know, putting your hands in your mouth. Make sure once you've used them you wash your hands thoroughly like you should be doing anyway and um, you should be fine. You shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. But bluebells make a really really fantastic glue. So the board I'm using today is a piece of um, ivy. I collected this out on a walk today so this isn't um, anything I've had drying. This is just a bit I've found and I've already had one successful ember out of it. But I just want to show you that these techniques actually work and that there is a method in my madness. So I'll try and knock out a wee ember for you just now, maybe talk you through a wee bit of the technique and then um, 
we'll, we'll go for an ember. I'm not going to blow it to flame or anything like that because it isn't really necessary. So what I'm going to do with the bluebells is one, coat my spindle in it. So just hold them in your hand and rub your spindle backwards and forwards. Now you don't need a lot, just a little kind of coating. And you'll notice they stick to my hand as well. So just wipe off the excess and then rub your hands together. And then you'll get the stickiness all over your hands. And you can see it kind of, the uh, the texture I would describe it as is like Pritt stick. You know like the glue you had in say school for instance in the little sticks. That's exactly how it feels and that's exactly what it's like in terms of stickiness. So amazing stuff. Again, I'm using the pith um, has been removed and I'm using willow in there as opposed to the pith. So there's a few different techniques for hand drill. Um, the most commonly used one is just regular passes. And what that is is when your hands go all the way from the top of the spindle to the bottom of the spindle. That's a regular pass. The other method is the floating hand technique, which involves a different kind of technique where you're applying downward pressure and moving your hands up at the same time. So one hand, this hand is doing down, while this hand is coming up. So it's a kind of a totally different technique. A bit trickier to master, but a really good one for warming the set up. And then for me personally, I tend to just go warm the set up and then move, move into regular passes. You get more downward pressure with regular passes, but the warming up technique isn't so hard on your hands. So we'll give it a wee whirl just now. So just keep an eye on your hands and make sure you're happy with how sticky they are. And now I'm going to do the floating hands technique. Now I'll turn sideways for this and hopefully you'll be able to get a kind of idea of what it is I'm doing with my hands. Okay, so this hand is going down, this hand is coming up. So you can see it's like a, a V. You do a rotation, make the V point up again. Do a rotation, make the V point up again. Now, there's a that's a very exaggerated way of doing it. It's usually much, much more kind of supple, or subtle rather. Um, and what it's good for is you can do regular passes and then you can work your hand up the spindle. So the pin, spindle never stops moving. And that's a really good way of maintaining heat. So that's the first technique. The second technique is just regular passes where you're pushing your hands together and you're trying to drive the spindle into the ground is how I like to explain it. Imagine you're trying to push the spindle into the ground with your hands together. Okay, so that's enough talking. We'll uh, we'll give it a go and see how we get on. Gonna add a wee bit more bluebell glue on there. Now you'll find it does kind of dry up after a while, so you might need to add more. So I'm gonna warm the set up using this floating hand technique. Now I'm actually putting downward pressure as we speak. I'm just warming the set up. Filling the notch with dust, it's important you fill the notch with dust before you really give it your all because it's quite an easy way to burn your cell out if you go kind of full on straight away. Okay, so I can see smoke there, so I've got it pretty well warmed up. Now I'm going to go into regular passes and just go all the way down the spindle. Just do this until you feel you've done enough or until you see smoke coming from your notch. Okay, so I can see a steady stream of smoke coming from my notch there. So I'm going to calmly stop remove the spindle. You can see the willow and the elder there have worked great. And then 
my ember is here. Like I say, I'm not going to blow it to flame because I don't really need to. Um, this is just more about showcasing the sort of little secret techniques I've discovered that make the process so much easier. Um, like I say, pine resin or bluebell on the hands and a good elder spindle with a bit of willow inserted to replace the pith so that you don't end up with nippling and um, you should really be good to go. So I hope that's helped, I hope that's given people a bit of an idea as to ways they can improve their technique and uh, thanks for watching, I'll uh, catch up with you again soon.